Hey, what's up guys? Arava here and welcome back to another episode of my F1 23 My Team Career Mode. This is episode number 95 today for the British Grand Prix in Season 6. And as we come to the halfway point, we come to our home race. You can clearly see we've got something very different and special lined up for this race's livery. A one-off special for the British Grand Prix and it's inspired by an official BMW art car that has actually gone before because this is is the original car and design by Roy Lichtenstein for one of the very first BMW art car ventures that BMW have done over the years. This is inspired by Roy Lichtenstein's classic pop art style in all his artwork and we have taken that and converted it to a Formula One version. Obviously a very different layout of chassis and car going from a normal BMW race car to a Formula One car but I think we've made it work really well to pay homage to, 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 to one of my favorite BMW art cars. I actually, fun fact, studied this and drew this 12 years ago in my GCSEs when I was studying Roy Lichtenstein and his pop-up style. So it's kind of almost like a full circle moment for me today where I've been able to actually you know, have a bit of a throwback to one of my earliest kind of art endeavors with car design, car liveries, and now, you know, being able to do it in a very slick style on Photoshop with a livery design for this game. And hopefully you'll agree, it's a very colorful, very in your face and extravagant livery for a one-off special for the British Grand Prix. But guys, if you did miss the previous episode, then be sure to go check that one right out before you see this one, because it was a chaotic one to say the least. At Baku, we had two red flags, three safety cars, and overall, 10 DNFs and one really epic save in the sprint race in Baku but all round uh, just a bonkers bonkers episode uh, it was a really thrilling return to Baku I must say and off the back of that quite amazingly myself and Jensen Button are level on points for the drivers championship as we go into the halfway stage you know having completed the the British Grand Prix coming up round eight in the season Leclerc 77 points so there is a bit of a buff for there but last episode actually you know even though we've ended up level on points was actually a pretty bad one for us as a team we did not perform well at Baku I was massively struggling obviously because we had some damage as well but even before that you know the pace wasn't really there confidence wasn't there and neither was it for really Jensen as well because he qualified really poorly so you know overall that chaotic race kind of masked the problems we had at Baku uh, and of course we're coming off the back of also a seventh place at Spain so we haven't actually had a good run of the last two Two races, although they've been really thrilling ones and amazing ones uh, overall for the spectacle. For us, we're hoping to come in for the British Grand Prix and kind of reset and build some momentum back up because I feel like we've lost a little bit. Although the races have been very entertaining for us to navigate in terms of out and out pace and performance, we've maybe dropped a little bit, you know, and there have been bigger flashes from other teams, including surprisingly McLaren, of course, who just won the last race with the uh, season three world champion Oscar Piastri. So Maybe McLaren are returning to form once again in this series as uh, we are navigating or trying to navigate Q1. Our first run was pretty horrendous. Not a great start to the weekend with the special one-off livery. Eventually we do get through into Q2, but I'm hoping we can break the curse, the Formula 1 curse of one-off liveries and absolute doom and gloom. It's a bit doom and gloom in terms of the weather right now. Very overcast, and I believe there might be some rain later on in the weekend on Sunday, but here on Saturday we're just uh, uh, treated to a very cold uh, track here at Silverstone right now. Overcast conditions the entire way, but we're trying to make the most of it and trying to get some heat into these soft tyres and finding a way more pace I must say in Q2 as we get to grips with the car around the circuit once again and uh, we actually had a very decent three tenths ahead of everyone but I'm sure others will speed back up in Q3 but uh, to my surprise then Verstappen knocked out in the Ferrari whilst his teammate Russell is up there Schumacher having starred quite nicely in Baku is knocked out in P13 unfortunately but good stuff for Valtteri Bottas up there in P5 and the Mercedes both Audis are through Albon is through Piastri last 
last race is race winner, doesn't make it through, and it's a return to Q3 for Yuki Tsunoda and Jensen Button. And uh, of course, we did feature in Q3 in Baku, but we could only go as high as P10. So hoping to rectify that and find some more pace around here. I mean, we should go well at Silverstone. You know, Baku, there may be reasons for us not going as well. Other teams maybe just geared more towards a circuit like that. But I think Silverstone overall should play to our strengths. And we do match Jensen by a 0.065 there. We're uh, three and four as we go to the second uh, se second run. So I think someone had a lap time deleted potentially as we uh, got into the second flying lap. But red first sector, not great start to that. Maybe we've already found the limit of where the car is, to be fair, as uh, we're already on the second row to, uh, you know, so that's pretty decent for us. But we go purple second sector, slight improvement in the third sector. Uh, less than a tenth really but that at least gets us into third place so we leapfrog Jensen Button but we can't go any higher than the second row but it's George Russell on pole position remember from last season he won this race in season five um, so it looks like he's back again to maybe you know try and go for the back to back in seasons uh, from five to six Albon up in second place once again showing that when things click McLaren genuinely now out of nowhere have some great pace. Teo Portier does well in P5 for Lamborghini. They're a, minute, a bit of a quiet period, so let's see how they go. And uh, Sonoda surprisingly out-qualified by Joe Guan Yu in P8. And uncharacteristically, the two Audis not looking great over one lap, although it's very tight in qualifying, so there's maybe some uh, action to come in the race, and potentially also spanner in the work in terms of that lovely British weather with rain. Let's go to the grid for the British Grand Prix. So maybe Lady Luck is on our side for this British Grand Prix. The sun is out and we're on the front row. Albon had an engine penalty. So he has moved down the order. We move up to second place alongside George Russell. It's a British top three. That is a pretty awesome sight for the home fans. But which one of us could win this race? Obviously, someone else could win it as well. But I'm hoping maybe we can go for the win in this rather special livery. That would be quite something. But it's going to be a tough one. And, you know, from last season, Russell was pretty damn handy around this circuit. So let's see how it goes. But first and foremost, focused on the race start. And then, of course, we need to worry about the rain later on. It's fully sunny right now, but there is forecast for rain at the end of the race. So who knows which way this is going to go today as we go to five red lights to the British Grand Prix. It's lights out and away we go. Russell with a bit of wheel spin. We have a chance to maybe go into P1 at turn one. Battery use needed here. We're side by side. A little bit of contact made as the hand of anger goes up in the cockpit. We get a warning for that and we lock up into village. <laughs> Oh, that was close. i got to tell you, I was wincing a bit at the fact that I locked up there and was going wide. We banged tyres with Russell. That could have been so much worse for both of us. I'm really, really, really lucky we got away with that. Joe Guan Yu now is on the back of us. So the Chinese driver doing very well in the Aston Martin, having out-qualified Yuki Tsunoda. He's now trying to challenge for a top two spot. Meanwhile, speaking of Tsunoda, he's down in P14. So he must have also had a grid penalty, I suspect. So maybe quite a few drivers around on the starting grid with new engine components. Leclerc trying to get the better of Teo Porcher. Button all over the back of Joe Guan Yu now. Can he go on the inside? No, he can't quite make a move into Maggot and Beckett. But maybe on the exit, something could occur as Russell is pulling away slightly. We need to try and keep within the one second to get that DRS activated once it comes through. But Button uses me as a bit of a tow line and he's going to pull himself around the outside and get the move done on Joe Guan Yu to get up into third place. And immediately on the following lap, it becomes very apparent that Button has a lot of pace in the tank, actually, once he's got past Joe Guan Yu, who's now down to P5. And we actually pull along and give him a slingshot to go chasing after Russell. We don't put up a fight whilst we watch Leclerc going side by side with Joe Guan Yu and side by side for Paul Chair and Sainz. So it's two by two there. The two Audis fighting the Aston and Lamborghini respectively but uh, yeah for me I'm playing the team game here early on in the race obviously later on we'll see what's what but right now Jensen sets the fast after the Grand Prix so we were actually correct to let him by he has a lot of pace here right now he could overtake Russell and whilst he does that 
we could follow him through because we weren't really looking to make a mark on Russell, it seemed like, from lap one to two. So I want to see what Jensen can do and can we follow him through and basically do a bit of teamwork, basically, and maybe the, the karma will repay itself for letting Button by. As he goes round the outside, it'll be the inside for Luffield, but Russell is going to try and keep it going round on the left. He's going to try and dance that Ferrari cleanly round and get back ahead of Jensen, but it's not over yet. The run to Cops. Button is going to go for it. He sends it to the inside, and now we're gaining. Oh, they make contact. Can we go to the other side of Russell? It's three wide for a split second now we're nearly neck and neck with Jensen we have to let off the throttle try and make it work and we do as we remain in second place but that was very close because we had to ride the curb that could have easily have spit me out uh, and at the same time we had to also give Russell enough room and almost immediately after that's happened we have a three wide with the two Aldis versus the Aston Martin it's Sainz going the long way around on the outside of both of them can he make it work this is going to be very tight they're still there were three abreast going into that chicane. Now poor chairs get involved. This is insane battling going on between all these drivers here. Uh, and it's unfortunately losing them time. They're now three seconds behind uh, Russell and myself. Uh, obviously chasing after Jensen Button, but into this left-hander, we go deep, and the marbles have undone us there as we open up the door unintentionally for Russell as we bang tyres now. Russell getting real aggressive. We squeeze him back on towards the left-hand side, towards the grass, but into the next left-hander. Russell is going to park that Ferrari at the right position to just stay ahead. He took the opportunity completely there. Fair play. The marbles really doing a number on us through that left-hander, just going far too deep, but it's fine. We've got another run at Russell as we use plenty of battery to power pass into Cops at the apex, but Russell is going to stick with us, and he's actually already looking at maybe to repass us as we go into Maggot and Beckett. So at this early stage, it looks like me and Russell are locked in because Button's already broken DRS, uh, annoyingly for me, but obviously this is kind of almost some good teamwork in terms of me holding up Russell to at least allow one of us to win the race, but, uh, you know, I want to try and win the race if I can, but, uh, mistake, things like that are happening. I, I just, I, once again, it's happened before in the season, I just don't look as comfortable as Button in the race conditions. This is a very odd position to be in. This is this hasn't happened to us, really, for most of the game. We've always looked stronger in the races. It's qualifying where we've suffered, but on this season, there's been so many times where Button has just, you know, had so much more race pace than us, and it might be the tyres, to be fair. He might just be, you know, protecting them so much, and I'm just wringing the neck out of them, because obviously, to be fair, we're on mediums, not my favourite tyre, as uh, we just continue this montage of battling Russell back and forth, back and forth and uh, you may have seen that previous clip by the way that was Piastri coming in for an early pit stop he's broken his wing I think on his own teammates back so uh, that's a bit frustrating as we nearly nearly rear end Russell did you see that? I had to wince a little bit and go straight on because I almost careered it into the rear wing of Russell. Well, this is getting very, very fine as we get right to the white line of the grass. As we go through the left-hander into Luffield and we do to Russell what he did to us previously and park the car in the right place on the circuit. Meanwhile, by the way, whilst we're going back and forth with Russell, this fight is still going on between the two Audis and Aston Martin. Um, and it's going on so much, they're now four seconds behind us. Um, incredibly close stuff here, but it's a shame for them. It's only as high as P4. Can you imagine if they're all with us for the for, for P1? But look at that. One, two, three, four, five, six cars all in one camera shot, all in one, like, you know, probably two tenths of a second. It's incredible stuff behind us. Uh, and it's giving us breathing room, to be honest, to be fair, me and Russell. But we're now coming in on lap nine because I'm hating these mediums. They're actually god awful. And I want to come in earlier. For the, uh, for the hard tyres. The tyre wear is pretty high here, so no wonder Jensen Button is uh, is performing very, very well, as we've seen a few times already this season, when tyre wear is high at the circuit, Button does what he always used to do in real life, be very cool, calm, collected, and smooth on the tyres. And it's actually kind of nice to see that's actually been translated into the game, clearly, because he has done so well in those kind of conditions, and uh, obviously not so well when it's more about getting the car placed and having it pointy a la Baku. So we're out on the hard tyres, piano 
Astri, uh, remember I mentioned he pit a lot earlier because of that broken front wing. He's actually going to end up being quite close to us by the time we actually fully come out of the pits here. So that actually maybe shows there is a strong undercut here, as there has been in the past at Silverstone, to be fair, if you cast your minds back to previous seasons. Because, yeah, Piastri's only three seconds behind this on lap 12. So I reckon we might have a chance to maybe get ahead of Russell a bit. Meanwhile, ahead of us, directly on circuit, Perez, on the next lap, in the Andretti Cadillac, is pressurizing Sonoda. I don't know what's going on with Sonoda. He took some sort of penalty on the grid because he wasn't in the top 10. And now he's looking really slow in the race. Um, you know, he was cooking at the start of the season, very much like he was all season long in season five. But unfortunately, now here in season six, he started to go off the boil a bit. And he's, he's not looking as strong. And clearly there are some issues in that Aston Martin that need to be addressed. Perez pits before we can catch up to him and have the satisfaction of uh, getting an overtake done because I actually haven't seen another car yet since we made that pit stop on, uh, on lap nine, was it? So, you know, quite a lonely middle part of this race as we do jump a load of cars, including Russell. And we pull away by a couple of seconds there as he's just coming out of the pit lane now. And uh, he'll be just ahead of Piastri, but he's 3.6 seconds behind us, which is good, obviously, because he used, you know, he was right on our tail before. But Sonoda is being a real nuisance to us. He may be a bit slow right now, but he's doing everything he can to frustrate us. He knows if he can annoy us, he, we can maybe unsettle us a little bit. Oh, Sonoda almost, almost completely slams into the side of us with the elbow out here. Clearly, Yuki is playing smart of knowing, look, He's trying to chase me down the championship. He's trying to chase down Jensen. If he can try and hold one of us up here in this race, even for a moment, this might be helpful as we try and go for the move at Cops, but we can't quite make it. Can we get it done through Maggots and Beckett's now? It's going to be oh so close. It's going to be neck and neck through the entire section. Eventually, though, thankfully, we will get it done, but... Sonoda pretty much lost his three seconds there because now all of a sudden Russell's back underneath us. And because we pit so early, our tie, our hard tyres have got a lot more wear on them than Russell. And again, at this corner, man, as we lose the rear end, I think a bit of marbles, a bit of oversteer, and just a little bit of uh, impatience with the throttle there. And Russell was able to sling it down the inside once more as we go wheel to wheel for, I've lost count how many times with the Ferrari, but uh, I mean, you can see the lack of grip there as we just lose a bit of concentration. We're going to need to really fully engage ourselves again in this race if we want to try and battle Russell at this kind of high level. He's doing such a great job. Even when we overtake him, he can comes right back at us because he goes for this switch back from the outside to the inside and he gets through on the outside. We get the elbow out. We're trying to squeeze him to the line. We really defiantly defend Russell as Piastri, very interestingly, bails out for a second pit stop. Very intriguing because we've got 10 laps to go and it, as you can clearly see, it's overcast now. Rain is on the way, I've been told, but when, I don't know. As we continue this, to, well, it's becoming a titanic rain race long scrap with Russell as we're trying to uh, wrestle our car as we drift it through slightly through Liffield. We're inches away from making contact with Russell. This is turning into maybe an all-time classic here at Silverstone. Ferrari, the BMW. Russell remains ahead at Cops, but can we just edge into the inside there? Into Magazine Beckett, we stay committed. Our tyres nearly touch. Russell gets offset a little bit by the curb. Then he comes back and switches from right to left, and he's still there on the inside. We have literally swapped positions about six times in the span of one sector. Incredible stuff. We get ahead for now, for now, but my tyres are hurting. These, even these hards don't feel that great. I'm praying for the rain. I want rain as soon as we can, but unfortunately right now it's remaining overcast and again, we're having to go defensive in village. It's uh, again, literally pixels from making contact with Russell as uh, we just get, oh no, a mistake on the curb. I was going to say we continue to battle, but now Russell's got a little bit of breathing room there as we made a mistake, and he's going to take that breathing room of half a second and run with it as the gap now remains the same onto lap 18. Leclerc now is half a second less than behind me, so the Audis are heating up, signs up to P5. It's been an unfortunate race for Joe Guanyu, who's gone backwards, so both Aston Martin suffering in this race. Leclerc now, though, lap 18, is all over the back of me. Maybe the tyre wears too high for me now. The Audi on the Audi. 
that's all. We squeeze him out. Oh, Leclerc's made an error. He's spun it. But there's contact behind for Teo Borchere. He's crashed into the back of Carlos Sainz. And he's going to be out of the Grand Prix. Russell's on the grass. What's happened? What's happened? Russell's on the grass. Leclerc spun it. Um, all on his own, by the way, because you saw there, my car was fully ahead of him. We, we got the move done. And then I just looked back behind me and he had spun it. Uh, and the safety car is now out. Jensen Button, he had a 28, 29 second lead. Ridiculous stuff. He was dominating this one. But now all of a sudden, we're going to be right behind him. But my hearts are really hurting. But thankfully, if you can maybe see... The rain, it has started falling. It's not quite wet enough for Inters, though. We need more rain, but it is starting to rain. That could be our saving grace. We need to bucket it down in the next lap, because right now I'm a sitting duck. I mean, just look at the exit here. The button off the restart. He's already half a second ahead of me because of my lack of traction. But there you can see for the first time on the uh, shoulder cam on board, the droplets of rain coming down here. So we've got late rain. We've got signs behind his P3. Schumacher, Verstappen, Joe Brand new Leclerc, Russell, Albon, Bottas, the top 10. Um, we've got a bit of an odd glitch on the left hand side with the mini map uh, in red. I don't know if that's like the FIA's way of saying it's starting to rain. Maybe the track's too dangerous or whatever. But right now, I'm more concerned about our pace versus Carlos Sainz because we're trying to get the elbow out here. But you can clearly tell the lack of actual pace I've got in the corners because of my tyre wear versus everyone else. And we have to accept that we have to stick behind Sainz and just be patient and wait for the right time to overtake him. And that will be two laps later. We're sticking with him only because we've had DRS the entire time. Yellow? Yellow air? Oh, no. Is that a yellow flag for Jensen Button ahead of us? Has he got a problem? I'm not too sure, but we're gaining on Carlos Sainz. And look at the straight line speed. That's the only thing we have in this race. I've got I've got nothing left. And that's all I've got left is straight line speed. Is Schmick Schumacher in the Williams continues to shine from Baku to Silver. Silverstone. He's fighting a bloody Ferrari. He's fighting his old teammate, Max Verstappen, in the Ferrari. Uh, unfortunately, Verstappen gets the better of him. Now Leclerc is behind, having obviously spun before this safety guard period. He's looking to recover in this race. So is George Russell. And we are, uh, I mean, just that, look at that understeer. The marbles, the tire. Look at the tire wear on the, on the, le the right-hand side of the heads-up display. Orange, which pretty much means we're in the danger zone, I think, near enough as we look to try and get past Carlos Sainz, but he's going to chop us off at the apex there and remain in second place. Meanwhile, Schumacher is trying his hardest to defend, but look at Leclerc go round the outside. Can he pull this off? Oh, what a move! from Leclerc round the outside that was so impressive from him as he's up into P5 now so Schumacher unfortunately going down the order but we do really have to take Sainz again in the same point that's the only part of the circuit I'm quick at as we have to, have to go really defensive versus Sainz in every corner he's got the advantage but we're just trying to pinch him in as hard as we can to make it difficult but look at the tyre icon uh, that was there on the on the on board on the heads up display it's now even worse even darker so my tyres are screaming, but if you haven't noticed, it's a second last lap of the Grand Prix. So I don't think we're going to get to intermediate. So I have to just suck it up and try and get to the end. It's two by two. Myself versus Sainz. Leclerc has just managed to overtake Verstappen. This could be a thrilling recovery from Leclerc. Having spun, he's back to P4 now. Russell's also looking to make a recovery as he dive bombs Schumacher to get into P6 nearly. No, Schumacher does very well to defend in the Williams. To be honest, even if he gets overtaken by the Ferrari. P7 would be amazing, wouldn't you say, for Williams today. As we're looking in the mirrors, Ocon is out of the Grand Prix, so late DNF here, but Sainz on the back of us. Oh, he's... Oh! <laughs> Sainz has hit us and he's out! What's happened there? Sainz has completely misjudged it and has crashed into the back of us. We've lost the back end as the suspension is compressed on the rear. I don't know what's happened there, but the rear end just went loosey-goosey. I don't know if it's because of Sainz hitting us. We've got no... Uh, there's no damage indicated, but I definitely felt like my rear end was quite loose in Magnuson Beckett's just then. And maybe it's the, tr the track surface, to be honest. Maybe it's just a bit wet as we lock up. I think it's the track surface. The, the surface is too slippery now. Uh, and the problem is I've got the most tire wear of anyone. 
Um, so, of course, I'm hurting the most compared to anyone. And this is what happened to Carlos Sainz just quickly before we get to the last lap. Uh, he, ju he just... I d he just j misjudged it completely. I was going really slow because of my tire wear, but that's my prerogative. The car behind has to be the one to make the, you know, the difference there. You know, all I can do is try and drive to the maximum. Science has really misjudged how quickly I was going to go or how slowly I was going to go through the corner. And he's just slammed us on the rear. Very similar to a move where Leclerc crashed our rear end at Spa last season where the AI just misjudged the closing speed, basically. And now we're back to the live action in the middle of the final lap of this Grand Prix and for old time's sake Russell looks to try and overtake us the Ferrari gets so close to making contact with this once again my, myself and Russell have actually kept this the cleanest we ever have out of everyone really in this race to say that we've been going side by side for so long we just managed just managed to hold him off through Magda to Beckett Verstappen though great podium in third place Leclerc what a recovery from that spin in second place but the man of the hour the man of the day is Jensen Button with a first time he wins the British Grand Prix. <laughs> It's a dominant display. He deserved to win it the entire time. You know, before the safety car, nearly a 30 second lead was ridiculous, uh, showing his class of the tyre wear. For me, really messy, unfortunate mistake in Magazine Beckett after the science incident. We'll take P4 with the, with the tyre wear we had. I'll take anything. Plenty of action here at Silverstone, a memorable race and an impressive victory. Well, Anthony Davidson, a resounding victory today, but what set them apart from the rest? I feel like consistency was probably the key today. There's being quick, and then there's being quick lap after lap after lap. If you can do that, you can capitalize on other people's errors without making many of your own. And that's an approach that can push you a long way up the field. Here comes your top three making their way down to the podium for what can only be described as a fantastic day for Formula One. Button is becoming maybe a bit of a problem for us. I'm happy for him, but he is doing very well now. It's another win for him. His third this season, I believe. Um, and he looked like a, in a different class compared to everyone else. We need to pull our game up, but at the same time, again, it was a bit of a chaotic one, so we didn't lose as much maybe to other rivals, but overall, it was a good day for the team, a great day for the special livery to actually get the race win. Unfortunately, not with us, but at least it was with one of the cars there. Guys, if you have enjoyed it, hit the like button. Let me know what you thought in the comments below. If you're around here, then do get subscribed for weekly full-on content. I'll see you guys next time. Goodbye.